Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about remote teams. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I am an engineering manager. How can I handle my remote team? Should I try and employ monitoring software? Probably not. Uh, there's this thing that you might have heard about where people have this weird need to keep things private these days where they get very sensitive if you check their emails or check stuff mm. and uh, programmers have the same sort of thing right and so what I like to mention to people who have this mindset is uh, does your monitor so monitoring software check how uh, how much effort I give into the coding that I'm doing because so that if it all it does is that it checks how often I type on my on my keyboard or clicks or like all of this other good stuff it's gonna be really hard for it to figure out if I'm doing something useful or not uh, because I can cheat that system pretty pretty easily even though you might think that these systems are very advanced uh, they can't figure out what good software looks like so they can't actually figure out uh, if I'm doing a good job or not but they can check yes, if I'm at the computer yes or no and the question is uh, is that what you're looking for probably not you're probably you trying you, this this thing that you're talking about this is something that uh, people who are incompetent do when they don't know how to have a productive work environment and my suggestion here is that you should educate yourself on modern day practices when it comes to running a company and a team because you clearly don't know how to do that or worse you've hired a bunch of people that are only there to make money or like you haven't actually invested in quality people you have invested you hired a bunch of consultants who couldn't give a fuck flying fuck about uh, how things go for you and if that is the case, um, there are ways to fix that as well. Uh, this, in that scenario, I would recommend that you adopt a Scrum-based uh, system of work. Uh, that is the one time that I truly believe. I go there's two scenarios where Scrum makes a lot of sense. One is when you can't trust the team. And I mean, there are better ways of solving this, but if you're stuck with the team, you're stuck with the team. And Scrum is very good because it's a high control environment or high control workflow where basically you force people through a lot of process in order to very accurately estimate how well they're doing in a time frame. So usually let's say that you have a sprint of two, month, uh, two weeks or something like that, and you force the team to estimate all uh, each section, then you can actually very clearly see what, you know, how much are they delivering at each time interval and that should raise some questions and if you keep on hearing that you know they just give you sort of weird excuses and so forth that's a red flag I don't think that this is sustainable this is what a lot of companies do to solve this problem and it sort of works but it's it's far from the ideal the best way to solve this problem is to employ a competent tech lead that you trust because you are clearly incompetent uh, in the sense that you won't be able to figure out how to run the team uh, because if you if you think that monitoring software is the solution to this problem that that you are clearly incompetent and the best thing for you is to hire someone who is competent a good tech lead is an individual who will be able to tell you what the state of the code base is that person will be able to tell you who is doing who is pulling their weight who is not pulling their weight they were, will be able to tell you what work practices you are using what's gonna work what's not gonna work because they are as I like to say they're basically the sergeant of the team and any good sergeant in any good army is an individual who knows the work of the soldiers as well as they do and is capable of taking charge and actually training people and like getting them into shape if that makes sense that is what a real sergeant is able to do and the tech lead is exactly that that is the ideal the tech lead the sergeant and so by employing that person and basically giving them the freedom they need in order to make the adjustments needed and listening to them you're probably more likely to solve this problem 
because the if there is a if this is a good tech lead, they will immediately be able to figure out if there are trust issues or if there are like issues with like attitudes or like if the teams aren't really pulling their weight if they're incompetent and then you might have to fire some people you might have to rehire etc so there's all kinds of stuff that can be going on but at the end of the day the primary focus of this person should be to create a environment which is consistent and produces consistently good results, a process around the software development. This is what the Agile people are trying to do and unfortunately for like the vast majority of Scrum Masters and all these other like uh, nothing roles in my opinion, uh, these people are not capable of fixing this problem. They can teach you the methodology but they don't know how to apply it because they are theorists and not practically inclined. The best person for the job is always going to be a tech lead who knows what an agile work practice looks like. So you, it's actually better for you to train. It, it's better for you to train a tech lead to understand how to apply Scrum. For example, if you're using Scrum or a Kanban or whatever you're doing, than it is to hire a Scrum master. That's a lot better because that person understands how the work is done. The Scrum master does not. And so that is my suggestion to you. Hire such a person and get them to set up what I call a gateway system, because that is organically the best, uh, empirically the best way of doing this. If we consider that, well, practically anything that is a quality check in our entire world is a, it's a gateway system. You loss our gateways where you have to fill a certain criteria in order to be legally compliant quality checks like inspections all that stuff is also a gateway you have to meet certain marks in order to pass the bar everything that is related to testing ci pipelines unit tests all that stuff is a gateway system and you can do that for human processes as well it's actually very simple you set up a ci pipeline and you set up measuring tools of uh, like how fast things are moving and then you take you know samples check each like the tech lead can very easily check. Okay, is the code coverage going up? Is the like how many bugs do we have? How much time do we spend on certain tasks, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And you get some metrics on how things are going. And then that person, as I've said before in many videos, has the most powerful measurement tool there is in IT and probably in the world: the gut feeling of a senior software developer. Well, that technically doesn't have to be a senior, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Nothing is more powerful than the gut feeling of a competent uh, software developer. Uh, I would say that's not necessarily exclusive to software developers. The gut feeling of a, of a experienced person is more powerful than any measurement tool uh, we have for like these sorts of human problems. So that is what I would recommend. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, you can absolutely add monitoring software, but it's probably not going to have the effect that you think it's going to have because it's uh, it's sort of like legal things uh, or any type of system that is of control. Uh, if you have the wrong person, all they, the, the right people won't, it won't matter if you have monitoring for the right people because they are go usually just going to do what they're supposed to be doing regardless of if you tell them or not or like you might have to guide them a bit man. but controlling them isn't really useful and the people who don't want to be controlled they're going to find ways around your system every single time practically and so if you are stuck with a team that where it's like the trust is very low and you really need some system of control it's better to create a gateway system and scrum and safe for example these methodologies are very good for, uh, for this sort of thing because they are high control from the management perspective you can very accurately measure at each step of like every sprint how much is being produced and if someone is if the team is underperforming in comparison to other teams, if you see that like, the other teams are like doing the same thing and you can see that they are very productive and some are not, that should re raise some flags for you. Ideally, you should go the other route though, where you create an ecosystem of good people who want to be there and you create a gateway system that is overseen by a senior level tech lead. That should ideally be a person who understands how good software is, be, is delivered, how you keep people motivated, and what matters to the software developers. Because if you have that sort of uh, person in place, uh, they will organically create a team for you that is actually high producing and actually happy working where you are. 
and that is much more powerful than you know going the other way way where you try to control everybody and micromanage and do this sort of stuff and uh, i would suggest that you hire somebody who you can trust because you are fairly likely not competent enough to deal with that situation have a great day